Hello viewers, this is Manash welcoming you to the series, You the Oracle Expert, your one-stop shop to learn and practice Oracle Database Administration and Unix with hands-on experiments using Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines. Build your knowledge base, confidence, and make your way to be an expert Oracle DBA. So far, we have learned quite a few things about Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines and Oracle Linux servers like how to install Oracle Enterprise Linux 7.9 on a virtual machine, how to create and restore a virtual machine snapshot, virtual disks, partitions, system storage manager package, and logical volume management, how to create and extend volume groups and file systems online, a few networking basics like change hostname and IP addresses, and using SSH clients x11, x window, and x servers to get a graphical user interface of a Unix based program. If you have not watched the previous videos in this series, I request you to watch them first so you get a better understanding on the topics of today's video. In today's tutorial, I am including how to configure a DNS server in Oracle Enterprise Linux 7. Now before we start configuring a DNS server, we need to understand what is a DNS. A DNS or domain name system or domain name server is responsible for resolving the names of the servers or devices in a network. Without a DNS, you have to always refer to a server or a device either by directly mentioning its IP address or you have to maintain some kind of mapping between the IP address or names of the devices locally in the HC hosts file in each of the servers in your network. This becomes tedious and practically unmanageable when your network becomes larger. The DNS server makes it easier by running a daemon called named with a very little resource consumption and it maintains the mapping table between the IP addresses and the actual device names or host names. The DNS server is a must when we will install Oracle Real Application Cluster in our virtual machine or in our virtual environment and when we will use scan and virtual IPs etc. Also, when we will install Oracle Enterprise Manager in our virtual machine to create our virtual Oracle database environment with many databases, it will be very difficult without a DNS server. So let's start. We will take our virtual machine named admin SVR that we cloned in the previous tutorial and designate it as our future admin server. This server will host all our central administrative services and software like Oracle Enterprise Manager, BI Publisher Reports, Email, SMTP, and DNS Server. We will use bind packages and utilities for our DNS server. The name bind stands for Berkeley Internet Name Domain. Bind is an open source software that enables you to publish your domain name system information on the internet and to resolve DNS queries for your users. We have to do all these configurations using root user. First, we'll set a fully qualified name for this server and we'll decide on a domain name for the home network. For example, my home network, I already have a domain name called manash.home, home stands for home, H-O-M. And for your network, you can create a domain name, anything like example.com or something like that. For our learning purpose, we'll create a domain called auraexpert.org. So we'll add that domain name to this server name. To do that, we'll go to our network scripts location, which is etc sysconfig network scripts. And there, is a file called ifcfz enp0s3 this one and this is actually representing our network interface card so we have to modify this file by adding a line called domain equal to or a expert dot org then save it. Now again we'll go to our Etsy hosts file and we have to make an entry here 192, 168, 167 that is the IP address of this server and we will put the name as admin svr which is the name of the server 
along with the domain this time aura expert dot org and also the name of the server without the domain we will remove this entry later on in the absence of a dns server this etsy hosts file is the place where you have to make ip address and corresponding server name entries for each server and in each server in your network save this file now we will restart our network interfaces using service command service network restart so the network services have been restarted clear now we'll install the bind packages and utilities using the yum command so this is yum install bind libraries that bind libs bind itself and bind utils press enter confirm by pressing y and our bind packages and utilities have been successfully installed now we'll have to make relevant entries in the configuration files related to the bind or our dns server components to do that we'll go to etsy and there will be a file called namedy.conf and we have to modify this file with relevant entries before making any changes to this file we'll make a copy of this cp minus p the first thing we have to do here is to modify a few lines under the options group and most of the things we will be using as default for example the port the dns server will be running in the port 53 we will not change it here we will put the ip address of the server itself that is 192.168.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
curly braces and semicolon then we'll make another copy of this zone that we created and name it as zone 1 dot 168 dot 192 dot in dash addr dot arpa and then type will be master and the configuration file will be name of the zone itself dot the zone word there and allow update will be none and this zone is for reverse lookup and then we'll save it now we'll go to the location slash pair slash name d and create the file that we just mentioned in the configuration file that is we have to create the zone files just to double check the names that we mentioned in the configuration file we'll take the last 30 lines and the first file that we mentioned there is this one and the second file is this one so we'll create two files there vi and we'll simply save it similarly we'll create the second file and we'll save it right now there are two blank files now along with these two files created we have to modify total three files here the first one is the name the dot localhost so let's see what is in there and if we need to modify anything this file looks okay we don't have to make any modification here then we have to modify the first zone file right now there is nothing I'm putting these lines here and I have also mentioned these lines in the description of this video below if you're creating your DNS server you can just copy those lines from the description and make changes where required for our purpose we are mentioning here the name of the server the fully qualified name along with the domain here and there is a mention of the DNS server itself that is the admin server and its IP address and right now we have only one additional virtual machine in our network and I'm mentioning the name of that virtual machine along with its IP address and we can save it Next, we are going to modify the second zone file that we created, this one. And this zone file is used for reverse lookup of our network. Please note that currently we are using an IP address for our network, whose first three segments are 192, 168 and 1. If we decide to create another network, say 192, 168, 2 or 192, 168, 3, something like that, then we have to create another reverse lookup zone file accordingly so now we are going to modify this reverse lookup zone file and put a few lines there i have mentioned these lines and the steps that i have performed in a text document that is shared through my google drive you can access that text document in the description of this video below and get these all text lines that i pasted here and make changes if required so in this reverse lookup zone file also I'm mentioning the DNS server itself at the top and some other configuration lines and at the bottom I have only two lines representing the two virtual machines in our network that is the VM Linux one and the admin server admin SPR and the last or the fourth segment of their IP address is 57 and 67 accordingly we'll save it now now all the configuration related changes are done we will be starting the name the service using the service command 
service namely start if everything is correct then this service will start without throwing any errors and there is no errors now this service we manually started but we want this service to be started automatically with each server reboot to do that we'll use the chk config name the on and from now on this name the service will be automatically started with each server reboot now we'll go to the network scripts folder and modify the script that represents the network interface card for one last time so go to config network scripts Take the file ifcfc-enp0s3 that represents our network interface card and we'll add one DNS entry here that will be our local DNS server. DNS 1, 192.168.167 and we will mark the old DNS entry as DNS2. The reason behind is whenever any query comes for this local network our dns1 is the first priority if anything is not resolved by this then it will go to the second dns that is our gateway now i'll save it and we will restart the network services take a look at the etsyresolve.conf cat etc everything looks correct we'll stop the dns service or the name the service service name the stop then we'll restart it again start check the status it's up and running first clear it now i'll test one name resolution using ns lookup so far we have added only two entries in our dns configuration so we'll test one of those first the dns server itself that is admin spr and it is resolved to the correct ip address now let's resolve the other other virtual server that we have with the name vm linux one and that is also resolved correctly now we'll test with a reverse lookup using an ip address instead of the real server name the ns lookup ip address of the first server and it is resolved to the correct server name let's try the other one with dot 57 at the end and this is also result to the correct server name so both our forward and reverse lookup working fine so this is how we configure a dns server in oracle linux 7. so viewers in today's tutorial we learned about how to configure a dns server in oracle enterprise linux 7 but we have not yet configured any computers or other virtual servers in our network to use that dns server so in the next tutorial, we are going to learn how to configure a Linux server to use a DNS server, a few basic network troubleshooting using ping, telnet and traceroute commands, disabling SE Linux and default Linux firewall within the home network. So viewers, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Please hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss an episode in this series for the Oracle DBS or similar educational videos that I am uploading every week.